Continuing coverage on today's SpaceX launch, we're just minutes away from launch. Let's get straight to meteorologist Sergio Puente. He is out at Port Isabel. And Serge, any movement out there? Yeah, right now what we're seeing is we're seeing that steam coming from the bottom of the rocket because they're already fueled up and they're continuing to fuel up up until that T minus 30 seconds, something like that, where they eventually stop and they're getting ready to actually take off. And right now we're actually T minus four minutes and 30 seconds. So we're getting closer and closer uh, to that uh, rocket launch. Now, uh, SpaceX is super excited about this one. They're building on what they've learned from test launch 10. And uh, one of the things that they're working on, I talked about this earlier, is putting stress on those heat shields because uh, they need to know how this rocket can perform in areas where maybe they kind of lack some of those heat shields. Uh, so they're, they're doing that type of thing. Again, this is going to launch around T minus four minutes now, and it looks like the clock continues to, to move here. So that is very good news. What you're going to hear here in southeastern Cameron County is loud rattles, loud pops as this rocket uh, ascends up into the atmosphere here. Now, right here at Long Island Village, I've been here before for other test launch launches, and you could definitely hear the windows rattling all the time. And so if you're in Port Isabel, Brownsville, maybe South Padre Island, you're going to feel those. Now, we got a pretty good view of this. The rocket is way back there. I could maybe try to point at it, but uh, it's back there. And let me see if we could zoom in. And it's a clear view. It's a clear sky at this time. Looking beautiful out here. The weather uh, conditions, again, easterly breeze around 14 miles per hour. Temperatures beginning to cool here. We're around 83 degrees. Uh, so the weather conditions on the ground look fine, as well as in the upper levels of the atmosphere. If you remember back to August 26, that was the last flight. It was the test flight 10. It was scrubbed twice, and that was all due to weather conditions. What happened that time was that there was upper level clouds in the atmosphere that maybe could you know, cause some lightning strikes. And right now, that is not a problem for us. So weather, I think, is probably not going to be the issue. If there is anything that keeps this launch from going, it's definitely going to be something on the SpaceX side, maybe something mechanical. But right now, again, we are set for T minus 30 seconds. We're getting closer and closer here. Right around the two minute mark, we're gonna switch over to coverage for the from SpaceX um, and they got all the awesome views of the rocket but again this is our view right now from Long Island Village here in Port Isabel. Some of the missions here that they're going to try to do is kind of build on a test flight 10. Again they're testing this the heat shields. They're also uh, going to uh, to demonstrate maneuvers that will mimic the Starship's final approach for a future return to the launch site and then they're also one of the the, the things that I guess I haven't touched on here all evening long has been that they're actually going to retire pad one. That's the pad that you're seeing right now. That's the pad where the current rocket sits. That's actually going to be retired and they're actually going to uh, take it off and really rebuild it into uh, a more modern style and something that fits their newer versions of these rockets because again they're just working and building and making better uh, better ships here and that's what each test launch is for and again pad two right to the right of that current uh, rocket is the newer version. That's where they'll be launching at least the next uh, test launches. So again, pad one going to be retiring. The booster will splash down on the Gulf. Starship will continue and then deploy dummy Starlings up in space. And then Starship will eventually splash down in the Indian Ocean, kind of like the last couple of times. Uh, the FFA, FAA will also reopen airspace within seven to nine minutes. And now uh, it's time to switch over to SpaceX speed here. Uh, we are T minus 50 seconds away. So let's switch over to SpaceX. We can hold at T minus 40. We're not planning to. All right. We're through T minus 40. Let's listen in. Flight Director Ty Huntington back in the seat. Take us through the final Flight seconds. Flight Director's until... go for launch. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, 
four, three, two, one. We have liftoff. Go Super Heavy. Go Starship. Thanks for all the historic flights, bad one. Vehicles catching downrange. Booster Raptor chamber pressure nominal. Booster and ship nominal power and telemetry. All right, we are about 45 seconds into flight. We're still getting the rattle here at Star Factory, we are seeing 33 out of 33 Raptor engines lit on Super Heavy as it arcs across the Gulf. Coming up next on Max-Q. Max-Q. So at this point, we've passed through that period of maximum aerodynamic pressure. The next thing we're looking forward to is going to be hot staging. So we've got 33 out of 33 Raptors lit. Super Heavy makes its way uphill. Hot staging is going to be coming up uh, in just a little over a minute. At that point, we're going to see all but three of those Raptor engines on Super Heavy shut down. Our version of Miko. Uh, most engines cut off instead of main engine. And then after that, we're going to release the clamps that are currently holding Starship to that hot stage adapter. It's then going to ignite its six Raptor engines to push it away from Super Heavy and then start making its flight uphill. So in about 30 seconds, we're going to see the engine start to shut down on Super Heavy. You'll see them kind of shut off in separate banks until we've just got those three center engines that never stop running for this process, and then looking for six ship raptors. All right. Miko coming up in about 10 seconds. See the engines throttling down. Who's running cut off? Ship ignition. Stage separation. Use back burn startup. All right, successful hot staging maneuver. So we've got 12 of the 13 engines lit back up on boosters, so it's doing its boost back. Real, real excitingly ship, though, we've got six out of six Raptors lit on ship there. So it's now gonna continue to make its ascent into outer space. Meanwhile, this boost back is happening. We're using those 13 engines. Uh, so everything, well, 12 out of the 13, and then we go down to three, and then we're gonna shut down for the end of boost back. That's sending super heavy back ship towards its planned splashdown zone in the Gulf. Right after we finish this boost back burn, we're also going to separate the hot stage. This will be the final time boost that we're doing down. this. Is All right, there's the end of the boost back burn. We should be seeing the hot stage. There. So the hot stage separates. It's going to make its way down, also splash down in the gulf. In the meantime, though, these six ship raptors are going to continue fire, firing for about five more minutes. Next up for the booster, though, is going to be its landing burn. There's a cool tracking shot. We dump some of the prop out on our way back in. All right, so for booster, this is one of the main things we're trying to get is going to be this landing burn. Oh, that's... So you can see the hot stage kind of making its way towards the very, the left side. So that's the bottom of the booster. It's about to pass right in front of where you can see some of that prop dump happening. 
they look like they're close together, but there's a good amount of distance between them, and the hot stage will go down and splash down in the gulf while the booster comes back for its landing burn. Starship is on nominal trajectory. All right. Looking good on our trajectory, looking good on everything. Jake and Amanda, you guys with me down there? Yeah, definitely. The crowd is, is gathering over here in the office. You can definitely feel the energy in here. Um, great to see that booster is making its way down to the splashdown zone in the Gulf. Yeah, the shaking down here was absolutely nuts. The windows are still there, still intact. So <laughs> that was pretty awesome. But yeah, booster's coming down. We're at about 30 booster kilometers. About. Shift. All right, yeah, and as we approach that landing, uh, just like tower catches, we will be doing a 13-engine landing burn to slow down. This time it will be in a V3 configuration. And as we're starting to get into the denser part of the atmosphere, the booster is using four hypersonic grid fins to guide itself through atmospheric entry towards its landing site. And we're just Ship about 20 seconds away from landing burn start where we'll ig first ignite the center 13 engines then bring that down to five to slow down the booster for landing and finally that will come down to three and we'll cut all of them off while we're still about 200 meters in the air so booster is going to see a bit of a part of it booster landing will start it And there we heard it. That's it. And we definitely just saw the booster make its uh, way down. We saw that big old flame just kind of uh, really explode and, and, and go down. And uh, you got to see that on that video there. Uh, beautiful. It looked amazing from this angle on this side and then we also saw uh, the the rocket of course take off it was one of the louder ones that i've experienced personally i was here for a couple of test flights i think it was six and seven and this one definitely felt louder so uh, you may have heard it as far as Harlingen, areas like San Benito, you might have heard it. Uh, so definitely, uh, you're experiencing those loud sounds. There might be there might be a sonic boom here in the next you know three minutes or so. So right after 10 minutes, there may have been there, you might hear another sound uh, here as that rocket uh, begins to move away. Now let's switch on over to our Karen Lucero, who is actually out on water. Let's see, Karen, how you doing? Yeah, said here we just heard a big boom over there on that side. We saw the booster touch down. It was pretty amazing. Everyone here had their phones out. We were all watching. We even have a little doggy on board. She did not really like it, but it was really cool. It was my first time seeing a launch and being on a boat. We're here with Dolphin Docks, so I am pretty just excited to be here. Uh, we, I want to show you where the launch pad is it was right over there we were super close we were as close as we can get we are in the middle of the ocean right now but and it was really 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 amazing um but i am going to turn it back to you guys because the boat is starting to move and we're going to start up we're going to start moving here so we'll be back with you guys back with you said hill and we'll bring you more coming up at 10. live in south padre island Karen Lucero, channel 5 news so as soon as I, I tossed to Karen Lucero, we heard the sonic boom. It was probably about two seconds later, we just heard the boof. And uh, we felt it on our feet, everything shook, and it was it, that was it. And so the rocket, the top of the rocket, the Starship, we eventually make its way across uh, halfway through the world and make a land in the Indian Ocean. Right now we're about nine minutes in. We'll continue to track it for you and have all the latest information on SpaceX's launch today on Channel 5 News at 10. We'll see you later.